In the expert trial, 1,504 patients with atrial fibrillation scheduled to undergo early or delayed cardioversion were randomised to therapy with either vitamin K antagonist or rivaroxaban 20 mg daily. The incidence of primary efficacy events, was uh, endpoint events, were, was very low in both arms, 0.51% in the rivaroxaban arm and 1.02 in the VKA arm. The incidence of bleeding events, the principal safety endpoint, was also very low and similar in the two study arms. It was 0.62% in the rivaroxaban arm and 0.80% in the VKA arm. In patients uh, requiring delayed cardioversion, those who were assigned to rivaroxaban presented with a significantly shorter time to cardioversion, 22 days, versus patients in the VKA group, 32 days. And this was reflected in a much larger population in the rivaroxaban arm, 77%, undergoing cardioversion as scheduled when compared to VKA, only 34%. In STAR AF2, 589 patients with persistent atrial fibrillation were randomized into three groups to have pulmonary vein ablation alone, PVA plus electrograms ablation, or PVA plus linear ablation. What we found was that the more complex ablation procedures where we added more ablation on top of pulmonary vein isolation offered absolutely no benefit with respect to freedom from atrial fibrillation but they did in fact increase procedural time as well as x-ray exposure and possibly increase the rate of complications. It's difficult for individual patients, including probably myself, to remain on multiple medications for a long time. There will be some limit um, to the population of patients that's able to stay on these blood thinning medications because of bleeding issues that we just need to be trying to think smarter about are there things that we could do for the rhythm itself which then will translate into less need to use blood thinners because you're not in atrial fibrillation. The BIOPACE trial randomized 1,800 patients with atrioventricular block to either right ventricular pacing or biventricular pacing. The main results are that the two kaplan meier curves are superimposed for around four or five years. But after that point, the two curves diverge and there are less events in the BIV group compared to the RV group. There is a non-statistically significant trend in favor of BIV over uh, RV pacing in those patients with uh, the need with AV block in which you anticipate a permanent pacing. Do not ignore that BIV pacing is a possible modality. The Septal CRT trial, conducted at 25 European centres, randomised 263 patients to CRT either with conventional right ventricular lead placement or positioning in the mid-septum. That is the first trial we did show that uh, an alternative site to the conventional apical location for the right ventricular lead can be used, the mid-septum. I think that this will open more uh, possibilities for the implanters uh, to decide which site of the right ventricle you want to place the lead in. In the near future, we will first have the second generation SICT to overcome some of the issues of the battery life and uh, the size of the device and being able to have remote care. So in that sense, the device will be the same as the transvenous device. We do not yet have the, the capacity for pacing. I think it will take us a few years first to look at 
uh, needless pacing to see if it is really as good as we think it is now. And then uh, we have to start uh, connecting these two therapies. I think that, this, that that is not difficult, but it will take some years before the device is capable of, of doing that. And we have some initial studies to show that it is safe and, and effective.